What's up, everyone? Thanks for tuning in to this uh, this video here. We're going to be talking about unsymmetric bending with an example at the end. So this is what we're used to. We're used to uh, symmetrical cross section, at least symmetrical in one way, and bending on planes of symmetry. Okay, and it's very simple and easy, and we like it. And the neutral axis is right in the middle, and it's good. But sometimes there is no axis of symmetry. All right, so that means things get a little tricky. For example, with this angle or this L-shaped section here, or there is axis, an axis of symmetry, but bending is applied on a different axis, okay? So it's not being applied in the axis of symmetry, which means things get weird, things get messy. And in both these cases, you can see that the bending and the neutral axis, everything's just kind of wonky and you can kind of imagine it, okay? So unsymmetric bending is the result. So now I'm just going to write down a few key phrases, terms, all having to do with different axes, and then we're going to talk about each one of these axes. Okay, hope you like these bubble letters. It took me a long time. Okay, so the first term that we want to discuss here, the principal centroidal axes okay there's two of them axes plural then we have our coordinate axes our xy xy basically then there's the neutral axes or axis singular and the axis of applied moment so the last two are singular the first two are plural so the first one let's talk about that one first i'm going to call that pca for short principal centroidal axis and all members have principal centroidal axes as you can see in this L-shaped cross-section here, even though it's not symmetric, it still has PCA and that doesn't change. It's a property of the section, okay? Symmetry can help you identify the principal centroidal axes sometimes, but not all the time. Next, coordinate axes. This is not a section property. It's really just something that we assign to help us make calculations, you know, calculations dealing with stresses in certain locations. And, and whatnot. Lastly, these two, the neutral axis and the applied, uh, the axis of applied moment. So questions are easy when these two things coincide. Then you just have the simple equation where the stress is my over i, but this only happens, these two things only coincide when the axis of the applied moment is right on top of one of the principal centroidal axes, okay? So if your applied moment as, as in this channel and this L section here, you can see that even though that L section is not symmetric, we've applied the moment along one of the principal centroidal axes, so we're good to go. It works out. It's still the neutral axis is right along the line we would expect, along the bending line, and everything works. However, life is not always easy. So when the applied moment is not along a principal centroidal axis, we must follow another procedure. And we're going to go over that, we're going to go through that with an example here. So in this example, we're asked to find the maximum tensile stress in the section and find the orientation of the neutral axis with respect to the horizontal. So we can see we have this I section drawn. Now let's go through our steps that we're going to need to, to employ in order to solve really any unsymmetric bending problem. So first, our first goal, we need to find the principal centroidal axis. And for, these, for this goal, we can use symmetry, or we can use more circle, or we can just look it up. Maybe somebody else did the hard work for us. Second, we need to resolve the applied moment into components that are along the principal centroidal axis. Then third, we need to find our stresses, and we can do this using superposition. And then we'll note at that time that we actually also need the moments of inertia along the principal centroidal axis. So we can do that first or third. And then fourth, we need to find the neutral axis orientation just to, I don't know, just to cap things off, kind of the cherry on top. Okay, so back to this question, finding the maximum tensile stress due to the bending arrangement shown. So first things first, we notice right away, we actually know what the principal centroidal axes are of this section. So let's draw that Y and Z here. And we know the I, the moments of inertia for each direction. We can look that up in a table. So I've written down here the IY and the IZ. So we've 
effectively already done step one. We found the principal centroidal axis and we used symmetry and then we looked up these values. Step two, we need to resolve our applied moment, the 16 kilonewton meters, into the two components along our principal centroidal axis that we've defined. So you can think of that as this triangle here with the 90 degrees and it's got 16 for the hypotenuse. And so we already found along the z-direction, along the z-axis we defined, that's going to be 15.45, just using simple trigonometry, and then the my, 4.14. So these two, these two make up that 16. They're the components along the principal centroidal axis. All right, step three, find stresses using superposition. So I've already written down the superposition equation here. And just note there's some negatives and some positives, and that really has to do with the direction we apply positive z to and positive y to. So you can work that out on your own and just see how that works, how this negative mzy over iz would change if we had our z positive the other way, let's say. Okay, and now by inspection, we know that point E is actually going to be the point of maximum tension. You can actually tell that just from this 16 kilonewton meters. The E is the furthest away, and just intuitively you can kind of see that. So let's find the, the Y component down from the middle to E, and then the Z component across from the middle. So that's negative 155 and then 82.5 millimeters for in the Z. And we can just plug that into our equation here, and everything works out quite nice. Uh, we note that we have times 10 to the power of 6 on the bottom, and times 10 to the power of negative 6 on top, just to get everything in newtons, millimeters, and then as a consequence, MPA. So we did that here, and so that's what I meant by it works out nicely. Anyway, so when you do all the calculations, you can see we get 75.1 MPA. That is our final tensile stress value at point E. So now we just have to find the orientation of the neutral axis. That's the last thing we have to do here. So this equation shown here, this, this tan phi equation, it can be found by setting sigma x of the above equation to zero. And then you can derive that yourself. Try that at home. Anyways, I guess you're at home anyways. Try that where you are. Neutral axis orientation. Okay, so the calculation, we, I just want to clarify here that phi and theta in that equation are both being measured from the z-axis, okay? So I just wanted to clarify that. So then if we solve for phi, we can do this tan inverse, and then, you know, this huge block of stuff here, 85.1, blah, 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 tan 15 degrees, just basically using the equation there. And phi would come out as 72.3 degrees. But we are actually asked to find the orientation with respect to the horizontal. This is respect to with respect to z. So we need to back off that 15 degrees, and then we can. it can be shown here that the final answer for this is 57.3 degrees. Okay, so that is our final answer. We've answered both. Hope this cleared up a bit about um, unsymmetric bending in your heads, but probably more examples are required. So find your neighborhood textbook, not neighborhood textbook, find the nearest textbook to you and just mow through it, you know? Every problem you see, like a machine like a structure probe, really. All right, thanks for watching.